for the school. What I'm trying to do to, in the show is that we're not different, we're all human. Maybe we speak a different language, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, the culture is different, but I can mix into the, any culture. I'm an example. So that's what I'm just trying to do, help young people and make their lives better. An example indeed. Now, let's catch up with the weather details, and Matt Taylor's here to tell us. Hello there. Well, it's another fine day across the UK. As far as the weather is concerned, at least we've got dry weather, just about dominant and fairly bright, if not sunny, across virtually all of the UK. It's clear skies for some at the moment. The reason is we've got high pressure weather. That settles things down. It stops the rain clouds from building up, almost putting a cap on the atmosphere. Around it, we do have the winds flowing, so still a bit of a breeze across the south. That's uh, still a noticeable one, making it feel rather cool in the shade. And yes, the cloud will build up a touch here. But further north, Scotland, Northern Ireland, a largely dry and sunny day, exception being the far northwest to Scotland where cloud will build later on and you could see one or two spots of rain. But across southern Scotland, certainly eastern Scotland, much, much warmer than yesterday. Temperatures could peak at 16 to 18 Celsius. 18 is 64 in Fahrenheit. It's been cloudy so far across northern England and parts of the North Midlands but that cloud will thin and break into the afternoon so you can see by 4 o'clock there will be some sunny spells developing. At the same time we'll see some sunny spells across southern England. Not quite as sunny as some have seen so far. Some of the cloud will start to build up a little bit and yes, you've got that northeasterly wind making it feel a little cool in the shade. But 14, 15 Celsius this time of year is not too bad in the slightest. You know, for Wales, again, dry and bright with varying amounts of sunshine and a lovely fine and sunny afternoon to come across much of Northern Ireland with temperatures here around 15 or 16 degrees. Now, through this coming night, we just about all stay dry, exception being the far north of Scotland for a few further spots of rain. The cloud across the south will start to melt away, and with lighter winds here this coming night, there'll be a few mist and fog patches. And for gardeners who've got the tender plants out, uh, probably want to cover them up. Temperatures will be dropping low enough for a touch of grass frost, if not ground frost, just about anywhere. For Scotland, Northern Ireland, limited here, the frost, because temperatures will be a bit higher. More clouds take us into Saturday, and there'll be some spots of rain turning heavier across the north and northwest. Now, cloud amounts will gradually build across the northern half of the UK during the day, but for most it stays dry, fairly bright. Sunniest conditions with the lightest winds this time will be across the southern half of uh, England and Wales, and temperatures could peak at 16 or 17 degrees during Saturday afternoon, making it feel much warmer than it has done during recent days. The breeze all will pick up in Scotland, so for the Scottish Grand National at Ayr, 11 degrees here, feeling rather cool, especially as cloud builds. Could be one or two spots of rain before the day is completely out. And those spots of rain will work southwards into northern England for Sunday, introducing cooler conditions across the north. Still dry, bright and quite warm in the far south. And that's how it's looking. Take care. Need some clarity on election issues? The election on the BBC, making it clear. Most flights to and from the UK remain grounded until tomorrow morning at the earliest. Hundreds of thousands of passengers both here and abroad are stranded, with many finding their travel insurance won't cover their costs. We're still not sure whether the airline are going to reimburse anything or whether there'll be any sort of compensation um, for the lack of support that the airline has given us either. A tiny number of planes are allowed to take off and land, including this one at Manchester Airport. I'm at Westminster where pundits and politicians are still mulling over last night's prime ministerial debate. Almost people tuned in last night to watch history being made. And police launch a murder hunt after a 16-year-old girl is shot dead in London.
Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Most flights in the UK will remain grounded until tomorrow morning at the earliest as the volcanic ash cloud continues to drift over much of northern Europe. Hundreds of thousands of passengers have been left stranded both here and abroad with some being told it could be more than a week before they can get another flight. This is the scene now at Gatwick Airport where all the remains, planes remain grounded. Well, with the latest on the situation, here's our transport correspondent, Richard Scott. Our airports are now a mixture of ghost towns and campsites across the country. In Birmingham, Glasgow, Manchester and Newcastle, the picture is the same. Airports are deserted and passengers stranded. Boring, uh, fed up and uh, generally freezing cold. We're going to reschedule for a fortnight's time so the trip all is not lost, as they say. <laughs> Ashley Morris and Zoe Ball from Grimsby have been planning their wedding in Mexico for a year. It's just been waiting and no information, not lines what you can't get through to and just, uh, just you can't get any answers off anyone and... You know, it's like, you, what do you do now? What do you do next? And it's a similar picture abroad. This is the scene in Frankfurt, one of Europe's busiest airports, where all flights are suspended. This satellite image from NASA shows the picture around midday yesterday. You can see Iceland in the top left and Scotland in the bottom right. And in between, a clear band of volcanic ash cloud stretching right across the Atlantic. Some planes are managing to get away, though. This is one of a very small number leaving Scotland, which has had a respite from the ash. Some have managed to land in Glasgow, too. Yeah. We're the first people to land in the UK today, they said to us. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, that's, that's well done to the company, really, isn't yeah. it, for getting us back? Because it can't have been easy. We were a long way away, weren't we? We were in the Caribbean. But with the volcano continuing to erupt and the cloud of ash still over much of the UK, most airspace will be shut until at least 1am tomorrow. There are two things to consider. One is the winds in the upper atmosphere. Over the next 24 hours, they're going to go from a more west